Hey there, my name is Jeremy Fontenot, and I want to welcome you to this episode of Revival Missions. We have been talking about the subject of Holy Spirit, the third person uh, in the Trinity of God. And he is the agent of God on the earth during this time. And in the last episode, we talked about the fact that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, the Holy Spirit is in you, for you, but it comes upon you for those around you. God has called you and I to be representatives of Him and His kingdom. And His interests become our interests. We are called to destroy the works of darkness, even as Jesus was sent into this world to destroy the works of darkness. Likewise, you and I are called to destroy the very works of darkness. And in order to do that, we have to walk in a fullness of the power of God. We have to walk in a fullness of the authority that Jesus gave to us. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit makes that possible. Jesus said, not many days from now, you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. He spoke that to his disciples who had already received him as Lord. They were already saved. But he, he told them that, that in just a few days, not many days from now, you will be baptized and you'll be filled with Holy Spirit and you will have power from heaven to be witnesses on the earth. And so today, I want to talk to you about the subject of how to receive the, the wonderful baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we have to understand first and foremost that Jesus, the one who saved us, the one who healed us, the one who delivered us, just, just remember Jesus, how when you first heard the news, the, the gospel, how you fell in love with this wonderful Savior. Well, John the Baptist taught that he was baptizing with water unto repentance, but there was one that was coming after him who would baptize in the Holy Spirit and in fire. So we have to understand that Jesus is the baptizer, that he baptizes us in his very spirit. So this is not a denominational thing. This is not uh, for Pentecostals alone or, or for Charismatics or alone or that, that crazy uh, church down the street. This baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everyone. Remember, that was one of our key uh, texts, our, our key passages uh, in Scripture, that Peter he spoke to the crowds who were there on the day of Pentecost and they saw this wonderful outpouring. And he said, this which you now see and, and, and hear, this outpouring is for you and for all who call upon the name of the Lord. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for you and for me. And God wants to fill you with heaven's best. He wants to fill you with Heaven's finest. So the, the, the first step in, in, in being baptized in the Holy Spirit is, is to understand that Jesus is the baptizer. And then we have to come to Jesus with, with childlike faith. You remember in, in John chapter 7, Jesus, he stood up on the great day of the feast and he made this declaration. He stood and he shouted out. He said, all you thirsty ones, come to me, come and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. So Jesus said, all you thirsty ones, you know, a, a condition, a precondition to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to begin to get thirsty. You have to recognize your need for power. 
You have to recognize your need for Holy Spirit. You have to recognize your need for more than what you have. And I would say that that is one of the keys to operating and functioning in the supernatural is to always remain hungry and thirsty for the things of God. You have to recognize that you need the Holy Spirit. You need his power more than than the things that you have in life, that the things that you have in life do not satisfy. There, there, There should be a craving on the inside of you for more of God. I hunger and thirst for more. When I, when I look at the scriptures, I look at the stories in, in the Old Testament. I look at the stories in the New Testament, these, these covenants that we have. I see that they walked in an incredible measure of the power of God. The Bible says that grace upon grace was heaped upon the early church, and they walked in the favor of God, and they walked in extraordinary power. And they walked in that due to a baptism that they experienced. It was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that that simply means, baptism simply means to be submerged. I, I like to call it pickling. There was a pickle recipe that was found uh, hundreds of, of years ago where you take a cucumber and you, you stick it inside of vinegar with all the, the flavors and you put spices and, and eventually that cucumber will take on the attributes of the thing that it's marinating in. It, it takes on the attributes of the vinegar and the spices and it becomes pickled. Well, God wants to pickle you in his very presence. He, he wants to take you like, like a fine piece of meat and marinate it in his very presence. And that, that way you would take on the very attributes of God. You know, we become what we behold. We become what we focus on. We become what we immerse ourselves in. And there is uh, the very nature of God that we are called to be divine partakers of. In other words, we take part in God's divine nature. We take part in his DNA. The very DNA of God is on the inside of his children. And, And the fullness of that is brought about through this baptism. And and this really isn't a one-time experience. The Bible talks about in Ephesians uh, to be filled. And that word be, it's a continuous verb, being filled over and over and over and over. Because listen, as you walk in this world, if, if you just walk in this world and you watch, you know, CNN or, or Fox News or whatever on a daily basis, and you're just eating up all that garbage and and all those untruths and you walk out into this world and and you're not in, in, in oneness with God, you will begin to carry out the deeds of the flesh. You will think in carnal terms, in worldly terms. But if you will immerse yourself in the things of God, in the fullness of what God has for us, if you read God's word and immerse yourself in the spirit, then you will walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the the, the deeds and the lusts of the flesh. And so we've got to come to Jesus. He, He gives us that invitation. All who are thirsty, come to Jesus. Jesus is the source. Listen, thank God for a spouse, but a spouse cannot fulfill and satisfy that desire that's on the inside of you. Thank God for children. Thank God for a home. Thank God for a career and finding your purpose. But nothing can satisfy you like coming to Jesus. Muhammad doesn't have anything for you. Buddha doesn't have anything for you. They don't hold anything on Jesus, who is the creator of creation itself. God created time. God created the bubble of time, and he stuck you and I in the middle of time. God created the heavens. He created the earth. He made all this. So so Buddha and Muhammad doesn't have anything on my God. 
My God created you. He created the eye. Just go and study the eye and just how fascinating this one element to our, our body, our physical being. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in the eyes of God. God created you. Hallelujah. And he wants to baptize us in his presence. So he says, come to me. Come to Jesus. And he says, drink. Think about that. When you drink water or you drink whatever, tea, coffee, it is refreshing. It is satisfying. And there is a drinking of the things of the Spirit. Think about it. Jesus stood up and said, whoever's thirsty, come to me and begin to drink. There is a fullness. There is a life in the Spirit. There's the gifts of the Spirit. There's the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy. Think about joy, unending joy. Think about peace. Think about kindness, gentleness, all these attributes of the Spirit. These are the fruits of the Spirit that we get whenever we are immersed in the fullness, in a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and we get these things in our spirit and then we begin to walk them out in, in the flesh, in our soul and in our, our physical being. So there is a fullness. Jesus says, come and drink. Drink deeply of his spirit. Drink deeply of his very presence. And then to believe upon him. Now, secondly, we have to understand that following salvation, God's gift for all believers is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So salvation is God's gift to the sinner. And, and, and when we receive salvation, re, we receive a measure of the Holy Spirit. But when we are born again, the Holy Spirit is, is God's gift to his children and involves being baptized in the Spirit. So we receive a, a fuller measure of the things of the very Spirit, the very Spirit of God. And God says something in, in Luke uh, chapter 11, verse 13. I'm going to turn to that real quickly. Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. He says, if, imper Im if imperfect parents know how to lovingly take care of their children and give them what they need, how much more will the perfect heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit's fullness when His children Ask him. I mean, just, just look at the desire of God the Father. He's wanting to give his best gifts to us. And he's given us Jesus. He's given us Jesus, his beloved son. And now he wants to give us his Holy Spirit. This is the very Spirit of God to live on the inside of you and I, to, that, that, that Holy Spirit would come and, and build his, his kind of life within us. Think about that. God building his house. You and I, we are the temple of the Lord. From wall to wall, we are the temple of God. We are the new holy of holies. And so God the Father wants to give us the fullness of his Holy Spirit. And he gives the fullness of the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Now, thirdly, when we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we will receive the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the apostles and, and, and the disciples of Christ that were there in the upper room. Um, there was about a 100 20 in that upper room. And the Bible says this, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said to wait in Jerusalem, wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon you. And everybody that was waiting in that upper room experienced an infilling of 
the Holy Spirit. It says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, what, does God want to baptize me? Is the Holy Spirit for me, Jeremy? Absolutely. When we look at Scripture, when we look at the book of Acts, everyone who desired the Holy Spirit received the Holy Spirit. And the early church, they went out and they preached a gospel of salvation. That included the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where they would speak in tongues, where they would prophesy, and they would operate and flow in the very supernatural. And it says, and began. So they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. So they began to speak in other tongues. And so you have to begin, you have to open up your mouth. You, you can't pray in tongues with your mouth closed, just as you can't speak in whatever language you speak with a closed mouth. You have to open up your mouth. You have to begin to speak. And as you speak, your mouth will be filled with the utterance of the Holy Spirit. And we see this throughout the book of Acts. We see it in Acts chapter 2 that, that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We see in Acts chapter 8, which was about eight years after Pentecost, the new uh, converts in Samaria, they received the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. Now, it does not specifically mention that they spoke in tongues on this occasion, but Simon, who was a magician who had seen all kinds of you know, magic and, and supernatural things because he operated as a magician, he became born again, and he was blown away by what he had seen when the apostles came uh, from, um, from Jerusalem and laid hands on them. He saw something supernatural. Now, he had already seen healings take place. He already saw eyes open and the, 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 the deaf here and the lame, you know, walk. And, and, and he saw uh, demons leaving people. But when he saw that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them, he saw something supernatural. He was willing to pay for it. And so something supernatural, I believe that they spoke in tongues. Three days after Paul, the Apostle Paul, was born again, he received the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. And although tongues, the speaking, speaking in tongues is not mentioned here, we know that he ends up writing the book, as they say, on the, the doctrine of tongues, speaking in tongues. We know that 10 years after Pente Pentecost, Cornelius and the Gentiles, they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit uh, by hearing the preaching of the word, and they spoke in tongues. You can read that in Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 46. 20 years after Pentecost, the believers in Ephesus, they received the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. That can be found in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. So receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit always carries with it the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now you have to remove any barriers um, to receiving the Holy Spirit, such as a lack of of knowledge or wrong doctrine. Some people believe that, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues is of the devil. Well, then why is it in the Scripture? Why, is it, why did Jesus say that these signs will accompany those who believe? They will speak in new tongues. So we've got to get rid of wrong doctrine, wrong thinking. Uh, secondly, um, we have to remove barriers such as pride, especially religious pride or, or um, you know, being dignified, holding on to dignity. Listen, when you walk in the supernatural, supernatural things take place. And if, you, if you're going to hold on to pride, well, I wouldn't want to shake and I wouldn't want to look crazy. I wouldn't want to. Well, then you won't experience the fullness of the things that God has in store for you. So begin to get rid of pride. Get rid of your, your dignity. Don't worry about what you look like. Just receive the things of God. You have to get rid of fear. Fear of the supernatural. God is supernatural. He is super 
natural. From the beginning of the book to the end of the book, you find nothing but supernatural things taking place. God fed the Israelites with manna from heaven, food that would fall out every day, these flakes of food that they would eat. So get rid of a fear of the supernatural. And last but not least, our, our natural mind, sometimes that becomes a barrier. Listen, you don't receive the things of God through your mind. In fact, you're born again when you believe in your heart and then you confess with your mouth. But you believe in your heart. So you have to receive your, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your spirit, in your very spirit. You have to receive the things of God in your spirit. And so that is my prayer for you today, that even now you would begin to cry out and ask Jesus. Jesus says, all who are thirsty, come to me and drink. And believe. So how do you receive the Holy Spirit? Right now, you just begin to ask. Say, Jesus, I come to you. I humble myself before you. I know that when I ask, that you will give to me. And I know that when I ask, there's this principle in the scripture. If you ask, believe that you receive. So even now, as you ask Jesus to baptize you, in the Holy Spirit, believe that you receive the Holy Spirit right now by faith. Just as you receive salvation, receive the baptism by faith. Receive that infilling. Receive the power of God right now by faith in your spirit man. I, I even I, I sense the presence of the Lord as, as I'm praying and, and leading you in this prayer to receiving this baptism. And the Holy Spirit will come even now and he will pickle you. He's going to marinate you in the very presence of Almighty God. And, and rivers of living water will flow from your innermost being. Now, as you are sensing this baptism that I, I feel even now, as you're sensing this baptism, go ahead and begin to open up your mouth and release the syllables, the utterance of the Holy Spirit. It might not sound exactly like mine. It may just be one syllable, but just begin to release the, that, that utterance of the Holy Spirit. And as you speak, in this heavenly language, you're going to find you're stirring up the gift that's on the inside of you. You're stirring up the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in another video, I'm going to teach on, on the importance of, of speaking in tongues and the benefits of praying in this heavenly language. But I believe that even now, as you have asked the Holy Spirit, or may, maybe this isn't your first time. Maybe you've heard this message before and you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But now you just you receive another uh, infilling, another infilling of the Holy Spirit. If you come every day and drink of this river, you're going to walk in peace, in a measure of joy that is heavenly gentleness will exude from you. You'll begin to live a lifestyle of faithfulness to God, His Word, His kingdom, and to prayer. And you're going to walk in the things of God, and you're going to find a flow to the things of the Spirit. You'll no longer begin to walk in the carnality, in, in, in uh, the thinking of this world. You'll begin to think like God. God has His best for you today that he wants you to walk in. And praying in this heavenly language is the key to the supernatural. It is the key to, to living an extraordinary life on this side of heaven. Because it's not just about praying in tongues, but as, as we go out, what's on the inside of us will flow and others will be able to come alongside and drink from what is flowing 
in you. God wants to make you a vessel. And so he's filling you up now so that you can pour out upon others. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. For more teachings, please go to jeremyfontenot.com. That's where you'll find our media ministry, Revival Missions. We are a ministry that prioritizes in winning souls and provide biblical teaching in healing, faith, financial prosperity, and living free from sin and living in victory. If you would like to be more than just a casual listener, but would like to financially partner with us to see the kingdom of God advance, please go to Jeremy Fontenot forward slash give for a quick and easy way to give. Thanks for watching. God bless.